morning, dear children. Good morning, dear. In the last class, we discussed or we learned about some of the first empires in India. That is, Maurya Empire. The founder of this dynasty was Chandragupta. See, Chandragupta Maurya made as a king under the guidance of Vishnugupta. Vishnugupta, or he also known as known as Kautilya. Chandragupta. He brought him to the power. Chandragupta or Vishnugupta. Why he was brought Chandragupta Maurya as king? What is the reason behind? To defeat Dhanaraja. To defeat Dhanaraja, right? Yes, sir. Once, whatever it is, Chandragupta or Vishnugupta was insulted by Dhanaraja, king of Nanda dynasty. So, in order to suppress him, in order to defeat defeat him, Chandragupta or Vishnugupta made Chandragupta as the king. Okay. So, we all discuss about the uh, the Chanukya's life and his achievements and his war, right? In the last class. After that, the Chandragupta Maurya died. His son Bidusara came to power, right? Yes, so after Bidusara, his son Ashoka ruled this dynasty. So in today's class, we are going to learn about the Ashoka, the great Ashoka, the great Ashoka king. Okay. He also known as Samrat Ashoka, the emperor. Samrat means the great. He came to power. He has a special place in the world history. So, in the history of the world, so many kings ruled the real. Okay. But the Ashoka, Ashoka's name was prominent among the kings in the world. He is the first king to keep welfare of subjects as his top priority by declaring my citizens are like my children. No other kings in the world says like Ashoka. Ashoka love the peoples, love the citizens. That is because he said my citizens are my children. My citizens are my children. The welfare of the citizens. Ashoka says, My citizens are my children. Ashoka's inscription. Now, we are going to know about the inscriptions about Ashoka. Inscriptions are nothing but evidences or sources. Okay, sources of the dynasty or the empire or the kings. Okay. Let us know. Ashoka's inscriptions are spread throughout India. We may found inscriptions throughout the India okay, that belongs to Maurya Empire. These are mainly in Brahmin script and Prophet language. These scripts are mainly written in which language? Brahmin language. In language? Brahmin language. And also Prophet language. Brahmin and Prophet language. The inscriptions which were found in Brahmi and the Prakrit script. Okay. Now, in Karnataka, 17 inscriptions of Ashoka are found in many places. So, in Karnataka state also, the inscriptions which was belong to, belong to Ashoka's period are also found. Okay. The inscriptions found at Maski of Raichu is of one more importance. So in Karnataka, as I said before, many inscriptions have been found. But here is very important inscription which was found in Maski of Raichu district. Maski of Raichu. Maski of Raichu. Why it is so important? The Maski of Raichur inscriptions. 
inscription it is important among among the inscriptions of ashoka period why it is so important so let us know the inscriptions as the name of ashoka appears for the first time here till then names like devanamriya priyadashi were present in the inscriptions see as i said before there are many inscriptions belong to ashoka's period but those inscriptions have not the name of ashoka not the name of ashoka instead of ashoka the inscriptions had devanamriya or priyadashi so those names devanamriya priyadashi or but the mosque of raichur inscriptions had the name of devanampriya priyadarshi ashoka devanampriya priyadarshi ashoka ashoka that is why the mosque of raichur inscription is more important among the inscriptions of ashoka's period okay sir till then the ashoka's names didn't appear remaining inscriptions but the mosque of raichur inscriptions devanamriya and the name of devanamriya priyadarshi ashoka now the ashoka names was appear in this inscription okay with the help of ashoka's inscription the life achievements and the extent of his empire can be understood as i as i said already uh, in the last class also we discussed about the inscriptions inscriptions or is nothing but that it had the information of the monuments okay information of the places information of the kings rulers and other officers okay and other important persons so prominent things like that the information having or uh, inscription having information okay. here also the inscription which is found in mosque of raichur it is uh, uh, tells us the achievement of uh, ashoka and uh, the his empire uh, extent of his empire can be understood by this inscription look at the picture page number 109 Was leaf portrait sculpture, Kalagara Valley. But also you may see that the next picture, Ashoka's inscription, Sanatti. Okay. There are many stone inscriptions have been found in the next uh, next page. One of them. Here it is the milestone in the history of India. Kalinga War. Ashoka's Kalinga War. Kalinga battle. Kalinga war. Kalinga battle. See, Ashoka declared war against Kalinga eight years after he came to power. See, after took the control of the empire, he did not. do any war he did not wage any war at the beginning after the years later in the sense after the eight years he started war okay after the eight years this is an important stage in his life kalinga war it is an important milestone milestone in the sense important place in the history of india my story it is it means okay so ashoka after the after uh, he took over the control of the empire 8 years later he started war against kalinga okay this is a important stage in his life kalinga was part present in odisha where is kalinga odisha, odisha. the present it is in odisha Ashoka was Ashoka waged war against this. Waged means 
war or battle. So Ashok Ashoka here declared war against the Kalinga. In this war, one lakh people got their lives. See how many people died in this war? One lakh. One lakh people died in this war. How many people? One lakh. Just imagine, one lakh people died in this war. Just imagine how it was, how it was war. And another one lakh became injured. Another one lakh became injured. They have suffered from war. Injured means what? Uh, they might have lost their legs, they might have lost their hands, and some other wounded. Uh, this all comes under the injured. One lakh people died, and one lakh people injured. And another one and a half lakh became prisoners of war. One and a half lakh. One and a half lakh. Okay? Prisoners. Prisoners in the sense? Prisoners means? Come on. Prisoners. Prisoners of war. Prisoners. Prisoners meaning? Hmm. In Canada, ID. Take the decision. 
Ashoka chose the path of dharma in the place of war. The path of dharma in the place of war. Not to do any war or not to do any fight. Instead of the war is sorry, the dharma. Dharma is a Sanskrit word. Dharma in the sense dharma. The Sanskrit word, okay. Dhamma is a greater than wa. Dhamma is a greater than wa. He says the path of dhamma in the place of wa. The path of dhamma in the place of wa. Instead of wa, you have to follow dhamma. Huh? It is a Good way, good path, he says. See, the given the war situation uh, depicted in war snake for rice culture. Look at these pictures. Okay. It tells about the war. Next, the spread of religion. After this war, okay. Ashoka was attracted by Buddhism and he accepted Buddhism. He started to spread the messages of Buddhism to his subjects. Uh, he said one should respect parents, elders, and should have compassion, truthfulness, and each other. See, after what happened, Ashoka decided to accept Buddhism, the religion Buddhism. Okay. India is a unity in diversity. People, Muslims, Hindus are here, Muslims, Muslims are here, Buddhists are here, our Jains are here. All are living together, right? That's why you say India is a unity in diversity. In Canada, we will have a link. Eta ten only about the hard issue. Alma, Agave, Sava, Chananda, Sava, the other than the book. So, come to the topic. Ashoka accepted Buddhism. And he started to spread the messages of Buddhism to his subjects. When he accepted the Buddhism, the religion Buddhism, he started to spread the messages of Buddha, both the Dharma. He said, one should respect parents, elders, and should have compassion, truthfulness, and each other. So Ashoka always says to his citizens, respect the parents. First, you should respect the parents. As well as uh, elders. Yeah? And the teachers should be respect parents, elders, teachers, yeah. and should have compassion, truthfulness, always be true, and be generous. He also said one should leave violence and anger and jealousy. And he also said one should leave. Leave means. Leave. One should leave the violence and one should leave anger and one should leave jealous. Ashoka organized the third Buddhist conference at Pataliputra. So Ashoka, Ashoka, he organized the third Buddhist conference at his capital place, which is the capital of Maurya Empire. The capital of Maurya Empire. Chapter of Maurya Empire, Pataliputra. Anupanga, Pataliputra. Pataliputra, the capital of Maurya Empire. See, here, Ashoka organizes 